The British royal family has been rocked by several major scandals over the years. Luckily, Netflix's The Crown has done a pretty good job of highlighting them. Here are the most controversial royal family moments they want us all to forget. One thing you'd probably assume about Buckingham Palace is that it's incredibly secure. However, Queen Elizabeth II received quite a shock in 1982 when a man managed to sneak into her bedroom one night. As reported by The Independent, Michael Fagan scaled the barbed wire-topped 14-foot wall of Buckingham Palace and shinned up a drainpipe. Once inside, Fagan made his way to the monarch's boudoir. As if that wasn't enough, Fagan jokingly told the tale of what must have been a strange and scary night for the Queen. Recounting the night in question, Fagan told The Independent, She was sleeping in there on her own. Her nighty was one of those liberty prints, and it was down to her knees. What are you doing? It's still too early. According to the intruder, the Queen asked what he was doing there before quickly making her getaway. He explained, She went past me and ran out of the room, her little bare feet running across the floor. But that's not all. Fagan reportedly triggered two different alarms while wandering around the palace before he turned up in the Queen's bedroom. However, the royal security team apparently believed that the alarms were merely faults in the system. Luckily, Fagan appeared to mean Queen Elizabeth no harm. And, as he told The Independent in 2020, I don't know why I did it, something just got into my head. Before Meghan Markle and Prince Harry's Tell All with Oprah Winfrey aired in March 2021, several negative stories about the Duchess were leaked to the press, presumably in an attempt to counteract any claims made against the royal family during the interview. One such report involved a pair of Chopin earrings Meghan wore to an October 2018 state dinner held in Fiji. While she initially claimed that the jewels were borrowed, it was later reported that they were a gift from Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, which drew much criticism, in part because Meghan regularly petitions for human rights across the globe. The Times reported that Meghan wore the earrings a few weeks after the Saudi prince was accused of approving the murder of the Washington Post journalist Jamal Khashoggi. According to Newsweek, the earrings were given to Meghan by the Crown Prince ahead of her wedding in May 2018, after Queen Elizabeth II had lunch with him in March. In response, per The Sun, Meghan's lawyers say every relevant staff member knew who the earrings were from and that she was unaware of rumours at the time that the prince was involved in the murder of Khashoggi. Once upon a time, Prince Harry was regarded as a bit of a wild child. Before settling down with Meghan Markle, he was regularly caught up in tabloid scandals, one of which included a one-day rehab stint. As BBC News reported in 2002, Prince Harry was sent to a drugs rehabilitation clinic for a day after he admitted smoking cannabis and drinking alcohol. A spokesperson from St James's Palace confirmed, Prince Harry experimented with the drug on several occasions. This is a serious matter which was resolved within the family and is now in the past and closed. BBC News noted that Prince Charles had reportedly instigated the one-day rehab stay for his youngest son after finding out that Harry had been drinking at a pub near the Highgrove estate in Gloucestershire when he was just 16. Of course, the legal drinking age in the United Kingdom is 18. According to her 2017 biography, The Duchess, author Penny Juna claimed that Harry was furious over what may have amounted to a PR move, writing, Harry bitterly resented being made to look bad so his father could look good. If you or someone you know is struggling with substance abuse and mental health, please contact SAMHSA's 24-hour national helpline at 1-800-662-HELP. That's 1-800-662-4357. If you've watched Netflix's The Crown, you'll be well acquainted with the story of King Edward VIII and the object of his affection, American divorcee Wallace Simpson. As noted by BBC News, then Prince Edward met Wallace at a party in 1931. Though she was still married to her second husband, the future king began spending more time with Wallace and even introduced her to his mother at a Buckingham Palace party three years later, much to the chagrin of his father, King George V. When George died in January 1936, Edward acceded to the throne. However, his love interest quickly became the subject of much press, and Wallace separated from her husband, who'd also been having an affair that July. 
Edward told Prime Minister Stanley Baldwin that November that he wanted to marry Wallace and would abdicate if necessary, after being advised that an American divorcee would not be accepted by the British public as Queen. Of course, Edward abdicated from the throne in December 1936 and was succeeded by his brother, King George VI, thus altering the British royals' line of succession forever. After fleeing to Austria and later France, Edward married Wallace in June 1937, just one month after her divorce from her second husband was finalised. The couple subsequently became known as the Duke and Duchess of Windsor, but this is one chapter of history that the royal family probably wishes wasn't quite so highly publicised. Prince Andrew's estranged ex-wife Sarah Ferguson may finally be back in favour with the royal family, but the 90s were a difficult time for the Duchess of York. Ferguson legally separated from Prince Andrew in 1992, and it wasn't long before she was linked to another love interest. That August, Fergie was photographed having her toes sucked by her financial advisor, Texan businessman John Bryan. The photographs were published in the United Kingdom by tabloid newspaper The Daily Mirror. And the news soon made itself around the world, with the Duchess even appearing to sunbathe topless in some snaps. According to the Daily Mail's Richard Kay, Brian revealed to him that he hadn't been sucking Ferguson's toes, but merely kissing them. As reported by the Washington Post, Brian waged a last-minute legal battle to try to keep the Daily Mirror from publishing the photos. But the courts ruled there was no reason to block publication, since Britain has no privacy law that would apply. Meanwhile, Buckingham Palace responded to the pictures by stating, We strongly disapprove of the publication of photographs taken in such circumstances. While Prince Harry has overhauled his image since marrying Meghan Markle, his former party boy style got him into several scrapes. For instance, in January 2005, Harry made the front page of The Sun for wearing an outfit featuring a Nazi swastika armband to a fancy dress party. According to BBC News, Clarence House issued a response that said, Prince Harry has apologised for any offence or embarrassment he has caused. He realises it was a poor choice of costume. As the outlet noted, however, the party in question reportedly had the already offensive theme of colonial and native. Per The Guardian, his older brother, Prince William, is also thought to have been present, although he opted for a homemade lion and leopard outfit, more in keeping with the party's native and colonial theme. In the years since, it's been suggested that the outrage surrounding Harry's costume was in part responsible for the rift that has since formed between himself and William. In his 2020 book, Battle of Brothers, royal historian Robert Lacey claimed, Following the Colonials and Natives costume fiasco, the young prince began re-evaluating his elder brother's involvement and the unfairness of William's subsequent emergence smelling of roses. It made Harry feel resentful and even alienated. During his wild child days, Prince Harry found himself in hot water yet again when he was photographed naked during a trip to Las Vegas in August 2012. It goes without saying that the royal family was unlikely to have been pleased that one of its senior members was spotted frolicking in Sin City and allegedly engaging in a game of strip billiards. Yet TMZ published naked photos of Prince Harry, who attempted to protect his modesty by cupping his hands over his private parts. According to CNN, Harry was third in line to the throne at the time, making the nude escapade all the more shocking. An anonymous palace official confirmed that the leaked photos were indeed of the royal, telling the outlet, Prince Harry has been on a private holiday before he resumes his military duties. A royal family spokesperson told TMZ, We have no comment to make on the photos at this time. Princess Anne might seem like a straight-laced member of the royal family, but Queen Elizabeth's only daughter once had her own run-in with the law. In 2002, BBC News reported, Princess Anne has been fined £500 and ordered to pay £500 compensation after pleading guilty to a charge that one of her dogs attacked two children. At the time, Anne was also ordered to keep the dog in question, her then three-year-old English bull terrier Dotty, on a leash at all times while in public. Understandably, this was a highly emotional case, the sentencing of which drew criticism from members of the public, some of whom thought a harsher penalty should have been meted out. According to The Guardian, 
The penalties available for the offence allowed for a fine up to £5,000, six months in jail and the destruction of the dog. However, despite the case being widely reported by the press, Princess Anne was apparently adamant that she didn't want any preferential treatment for being a royal. Still, the ordeal was notable for two reasons, specifically because Anne is a member of the monarchy, with BBC News noting, the case is the first time a senior member of the royal family has been convicted of a criminal offence, and no other senior royal has attended court for 100 years. If you think you're well-versed in Prince Charles and Camilla Parker Bowles' decades-long relationship, think again. While most people are aware that they were intimately involved while married to other people, there are some details that might have flown under the radar, or at least ones we might have tried to forget. Back in 1992, a recorded phone conversation between Charles and Camilla was leaked to the press. Recorded three years prior, the Evening Standard reported, It caused huge embarrassment to the royal family as it included details of how the prince had told his lover that he wanted to be her tampon. At the time the phone call was recorded, Charles was still married to Princess Diana. The Prince and Princess of Wales would announce their separation more than three years later, in December 1992. Viewers of The Crown will be at least partially acquainted with the story of Princess Margaret's divorce from her husband, Anthony Armstrong Jones, also known as Lord Snowden. Margaret announced their separation in 1976 after 16 years of marriage. However, according to BBC News, it is understood Lord Snowden knew nothing of the announcement prior to its release. While Margaret's alleged solo split decision might seem shocking enough, the separation and subsequent divorce was seen as somewhat of a scandal for the royal family, with BBC News noting, Princess Margaret becomes the first member of the royal family to divorce since Henry VIII. The announcement also followed rumours that Margaret had been having an affair as she was photographed in the Caribbean with 29-year-old Roddy Llewellyn. While other royal couples have gotten divorced since then, Princess Margaret likely found herself in a very unusual and highly controversial position as the first in several centuries. Princess Anne separated from her first husband, Captain Mark Phillips, in 1989, and the couple finalised their divorce in 1992. While the former royal couple shared two children, news broke in 1991 that Phillips had fathered a love child named Felicity in 1985 with New Zealand-based art teacher Heather Tonkin. Tonkin told The Express, My ambition is to get Mark's public acceptance of her and to be able to enter his name on her birth certificate. Although Phillips initially denied the paternity claims, it was soon revealed that Princess Anne's ex had been sending money to Tonkin for five years. Additionally, a paternity test in 1991 revealed that Phillips was indeed the father. Prince Andrew's ex-wife, Sarah Ferguson, was caught out yet again when a sting operation revealed that she'd accepted a bribe for royal access in 2010. As The Guardian reported, Sarah Ferguson has apologised for a serious lapse in judgement after she was exposed by a News of the World sting operation in which she promised to obtain access to her former husband in return for £500,000, approximately $700,000. The operation had been conducted by a News of the World undercover reporter who recorded his meeting with the Duchess. In the recording, Ferguson appeared to say, per The Guardian, The payment opens up everything you would ever wish for. I can open any door you want, and I will for you. Look after me, and he'll look after you. You'll get it back tenfold. The Duchess of York was referring to her ex-husband's role as the UK's trade envoy, which saw him promoting British businesses abroad. Andrew was given the role in 2001, but he announced he was stepping down from the position in 2011. According to The Guardian, Ferguson said of being caught in a sting operation, I can confirm that the Duke of York was not aware or involved in any of the discussions that occurred. I am sincerely sorry for my actions. Which is kind of brave to say, but it's true. Just as the tabloids managed to get their hands on salacious snaps of Sarah Ferguson with her foot in a man's mouth, they also published pictures of the Countess of Wessex, then Sophie Rhys Jones, topless prior to her royal wedding to Prince Edward. In May 1999, the month before she tied the knot with Edward, The Sun published a semi-nude photo of Rhys Jones posing with British DJ Chris Tarrant. The photograph was taken over a decade earlier in 1988 by a fellow DJ who was subsequently fired from her job. 
The fact that the photo was published so close to Rhys Jones's royal wedding to Edward suggested that the aim was to cause controversy for the royal family. One of Rhys Jones's colleagues told The Guardian, As you can imagine, she is very distressed and upset. It is an appalling thing to happen. Buckingham Palace responded with a statement, which read, This morning's story in The Sun is a gross invasion of privacy and cannot be regarded as in the public interest. Prince Edward and Miss Rhys Jones are very grateful to those members of the public who have telephoned offering support, which naturally is also our immediate concern. We shall of course be considering further action and no options have been ruled out. Unfortunately, the Countess of Wessex isn't the only member of the British royal family to find topless photos of herself published by the press. When Kate Middleton and Prince William took a summer vacation to France in 2012, a photographer snapped pictures of the Duchess of Cambridge while she was sunbathing topless. Per The Sun, Kate and William were in a chateau in the south of France, owned by the second Earl Snowden, the Queen's nephew. The French magazine Closer published the pictures, a decision they likely later regretted. Meanwhile, Britain's tabloids reportedly refused to purchase the photos, and the Cambridges quickly acquired an injunction to stop further publication of the snaps once they learned they'd been taken. According to The Guardian, the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge sued Closer and French newspaper La Provence for publishing the photographs. Prince William said of the situation, in September 2012, my wife and I thought that we could go to France for a few days in a secluded villa owned by a member of my family and thus enjoy our privacy. The clandestine way in which these photographs were taken was particularly shocking to us as it breached our privacy. The court ruled in Kate and William's favour and the couple received damages from those involved in the publication of the photos. Prince William found himself in a compromising position when he was reportedly caught on camera dirty dancing with a woman other than wife, Kate Middleton, during a 2017 skiing trip with his male friends. According to The Sun, the royal can be seen flirtatiously stealing the Aussie model's hat and putting his hand on another mystery woman's waist in the latest video. Meanwhile, a source who was allegedly present at the club claimed, he was dancing so wildly that I did a double take when I first saw him and thought it must be a lookalike. But before long, everyone realised they really were partying with Prince William. As royal reporter Katie Nicole revealed in Vanity Fair, Kate is said to be understandably less than pleased that her husband has been filmed partying with his friends and an unidentified woman. A source also revealed to Nicole, it was William's choice to go away, but make no mistake, Kate wears the trousers in their marriage and she won't be happy with William's antics. She thought his partying days and larking around with the boys was a thing of the past. I imagine she'll find this humiliating. Hopefully William learned his lesson and has since left vacations with the boys in the past. And I wouldn't let it break me. As well as having an illicit affair, former King Edward VIII and Wallace Simpson reportedly had some rather inappropriate connections to Adolf Hitler and the Nazi party. Royal biographer Andrew Morton explored the connection between the Duke and Duchess of Windsor and Hitler in his 2015 book, 17 Carnations, The Royals, The Nazis and The Biggest Cover-Up in History. In an excerpt from Morton's book published by the New York Post, the royal expert revealed, after his abdication, Hitler invited the Duke and Duchess to visit Germany in October 1937. It was the chance for the Duke to show his new wife that, though he was no longer king, nothing really had changed. The Duke infamously exchanging Nazi salutes with his hosts. The Duke even enjoyed a 50-minute private conversation with Hitler at his mountain retreat. It would seem that, per Morton, Hitler had spent years courting Edward. According to Morton, Hitler hoped that he could exploit a connection to the British throne. As the biographer revealed, a dossier regarding Edward's many connections to the Nazis was discovered, much to the royal family's dismay. While even the Prime Minister at the time, Winston Churchill, wanted all evidence of Edward's ties to Hitler destroyed, two American academics managed to stop the destruction. Eventually, the incriminating files were published, but not until 1957, by which time Edward VIII was long out out of the zeitgeist. Perhaps the most dreadful scandal to hit the royal family in more recent years involves Prince Andrew and his connection with convicted sex offender Jeffrey Epstein. 
As far back as 2011, Vanity Fair published an article in which a source claimed, Andrew has a stubborn streak. He does stupid things out of hubris to show that he can do them. If he likes someone, he'll ignore the truth about that person. And that goes both for Jeffrey and Sarah Ferguson. I don't go into um, a friendship looking for the wrong thing. Rather than stepping back from his so-called friendship with the businessman who had been convicted in 2008, Andrew was photographed visiting Epstein and staying at his house in New York in 2010. After allegations about the prince also emerged, Andrew gave an interview to BBC's Newsnight, in which he categorically denied the claims made against him. However, the prince subsequently announced he was stepping back from royal duties after receiving backlash following the controversial interview. If you or someone you know has been a victim of sexual abuse, you can call the National Sexual Assault Hotline at 1-800-656-HOPE. That's 1-800-656-4673. Or visit rain.org for additional resources. In March 2021, CBS broadcast Oprah Winfrey's exclusive interview with Meghan Markle and Prince Harry, in which the couple made several startling claims about the royal family. The Duchess of Sussex alleged that a racist discussion about son Archie took place before his birth among some unnamed members of the royal family. Meghan said... And also concerns and conversations about how dark his skin might be when he's born. Meghan also revealed that she was suicidal during her time as a senior member of the royal family and claimed that she sought help from staff only to be denied mental health treatment. She explained... I said that I needed to go somewhere to get help and said that I've never felt this way before and I need to go somewhere. And I was told that I couldn't, that it wouldn't be good for the institution. I was really ashamed to say it at the time. Following the interview, Buckingham Palace released a statement which said, The issues raised, particularly that of race, are concerning. While some recollections may vary, they are taken very seriously and will be addressed by the family privately. If you or someone you know is having suicidal thoughts, please call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline at 1-800-273-TALK. That's 1-800-273-8255 or text HOME to the crisis text line at 741-741. It would seem that Prince Andrew has always been a controversial figure within the royal family. I would like to think that lessons have been learned. People reported back in 1982 that the prince had drawn criticism for dating a softcore porn star whom he introduced to the royal family. Per People, the prince's date was swiftly identified as American-born softcore actress Kathleen Koo Stark, 26, and the British press flew into a frenzy. Perhaps most shocking of all, according to the tabloids, was the fact that Andrew had reportedly introduced his latest dalliance to his mother, the Queen, at Balmoral Castle in Scotland. As a spokesperson said at the time, We do not know if the Queen was aware of the girl's acting career before she was invited to Balmoral. If Queen Elizabeth wasn't aware prior to meeting her son's latest beau, she certainly found out once the news hit the morning papers. While Queen Elizabeth appears to be the most upstanding member of the royal family, she has been faced with her own controversies from time to time. As reported by Newsweek in 2017, Queen Elizabeth's estate reportedly invested at least $13.1 million into offshore tax-sheltered funds located in the Cayman Islands and Bermuda, prompting Labour Party leaders and anti-monarchists to demand an investigation into Her Royal Highness's finances. Understandably, the world was pretty shocked by the news that the Queen's finances might not be totally above board, and the monarch drew criticism for being, perhaps indirectly, involved in the Paradise Papers scheme, even if she wasn't personally responsible for managing her own finances. As noted by Newsweek, Queen Elizabeth receives $97 million each year in tariff-free money funded by British taxpayers. As a result, her alleged involvement in avoiding tax was particularly galling to the general public. In 2017, Princess Michael of Kent made headlines when she was photographed wearing a racist piece of jewellery to a royal dinner with Meghan Markle. 
As reported by Harper's Bazaar, the wife of Prince Michael of Kent, Queen Elizabeth II's first cousin, was spotted wearing a racially offensive brooch on her coat. The accessory is a piece of blackamoor jewellery, which fetishise images of slavery. TMZ reported at the time, We're told it was a gift she's worn many times before without controversy. However, Princess Michael of Kent is also alleged to have a history of racist behavior, as outlined by The Guardian, making the brooch incident even more concerning. Still, a source cited by TMZ claimed, She's learned her lesson and is going to retire the brooch for good. It would seem that the royal family has been faced with more controversies than most. However, it's likely that as long as the British royals' seemingly archaic ways continue to exist, they're going to continue to find themselves in hot water. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more Nicki Swift videos about the royal family are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.